Hi folks, I'm Adam D'Angelo, the Seed Scholar, and every year my lab here at the University of Wisconsin purchases hundreds of thousands of flies. And the reason why has something to do with these bags. Let's check it out. Welcome to the Goldman Lab Carrot Breeding Program. Part of our job here is to create new and improved varieties of carrots. Now I know what you're probably thinking, why do we need new carrots? And you've got a point. Carrots are pretty great. They're a good source of beta carotene, antioxidants, dietary fiber, and a wide range of vitamins and nutrients. Plus, they make for a tasty and crunchy snack. But there is a lot of room for improvement, particularly in how carrots are grown. Some major goals of carrot breeding programs include producing varieties of carrots that grow bigger, tastier, or higher quality roots, or producing varieties that are better suited for growing in drought or extreme weather conditions and are less susceptible to diseases and pests, meaning that farmers can use fewer pesticides and chemical inputs. When we choose two plants that we would like to allow to pollinate each other, we call that a cross. We can write out a cross by writing the identifying information of each plant with an X in between to show that they're pollinating each other. Any seeds collected from the flowers of plants in a cross will be offspring from just those two plants. When seeds from a cross are collected and grown, we call the resulting plants the progeny. And just like us, each individual plant contains a mix of the genes from both of their parents. The basic process of plant breeding involves finding plants that have good traits and combining them with other plants that also have good traits. By doing this, we hope to consolidate the good traits from each parent plant into the progeny. Cross good, buy good, get better. In this case, we grow carrots out in the field and then rank them according to a long list of criteria. When we find carrots that do really well in the field, we want to cross them with other carrots that did well. We do that by choosing the plants we would like to use as parents and allowing them to pollinate each other. In the field, carrots usually take two years to go from seed to seed. The first year, a seed is planted and grows into a carrot plant with a root, which is the point at which farmers usually harvest the carrots that we eat. However, if the plant is not harvested, then at the end of the first year, the leaves of the carrot die back and the root lives in the soil over the winter. In the spring of the second growing season, that root sprouts and forms flowers, which produce seed in the fall of the second year. To speed up the process, each fall we harvest the roots of our prospective parent plants and bring them back to the lab where we store them in a large walk-in cooler for a few months to simulate winter. Then we plant the roots in pots in the greenhouse. The warm temperatures make the carrots think that it's spring and they grow leaves and eventually begin to flower. By having a greenhouse season each winter, we can essentially double the speed of our breeding process, which is a big deal since it often can take eight or more cycles of crosses to produce a new variety. Once we see that the flowers are just about to open and release their pollen, we take both parent plants for the cross and put them into one of these cloth cages so that no other pollen can contaminate our cross. The cages are simple, made of wire, cloth, a tube, and a cork, but they have a very important job. Inside each of these cages are hundreds or thousands of tiny carrot flowers that we need to pollinate. It would take us years to go through and pollinate all these flowers by hand, but luckily we've been able to enlist the help of some cheap labor. Introducing the blue bottle fly. Starting in January, we purchase flies from a fly farm that are mailed to us every week. They arrive as pupae and are kept in the fridge until we are ready to use them. 
After about two days at room temperature, each pupa will grow into a mature fly. And in case you're wondering, one 8 ounce cup can contain upwards of 2,000 fly pupae waiting to emerge from their brown shells into fully grown blue bottle flies. These flies buzz around the inside of the cages, going from flower to flower to drink the sweet nectar and eat the protein-rich pollen. But each time they move from flower to flower, they are inadvertently transporting pollen grains on their feet and bodies. The flowers are pollinated, and each individual flower forms a tiny seed, which we will collect and plant in the field come spring. We go through a lot of effort to make sure that we know which plants are the parents in a particular cross. But with hundreds of cages, eventually some flies can escape. And those flies can pose a big problem for plant breeding programs because they can contaminate your cross with pollen from other carrot plants. But with a steady hand, some patience, and a whole lot of flies, each winter we make upwards of 1,000 carrot crosses in the greenhouse, producing over half a million carrot seeds and setting ourselves up for another busy season in the field. So there you have it. That's how we make carrot crosses in a plant breeding program. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on plant breeding, agriculture, and the future of your food. And until next time, keep growing, scholars.